If I could sum up Matthew chapter 26, verses 20 through 46, I would use the word intimate. Intimate. Now we're continuing, of course, to look at the the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here we see the last moments before the, the kind of stopper is pulled off of the evil that's been building up against Jesus Christ. Have you ever taken a bottle of soda pop? And uh, if you really wanted to get somebody, and I don't recommend you doing this, you shake the can really hard and say, here, have a nice cold soda. And then they pop the top open and of course it blows up in their face. I never did that. I've only seen it on TV. But what, what happens, of course, is that as you shake it, the uh, carbon dioxide comes out of the solution and it forms a gas and the pressure builds up and when you pop that, it's all released and so it forces all the liquid and everything out. And in some ways, that's what was happening in the life of Jesus Christ, not with a soda can, but with evil intent on the part of the religious leaders of the day, certainly on the part of Lucifer, uh, arming these forces and arraying them against what they perceived as a threat to their power base. And so things were really coming to a head. Things were really building up. And this is kind of like the, the calm before the storm, the last moments before literally all hell breaks loose on the person of Jesus Christ. And we're going to see two intimate events in the last days of the Lord's life here on, on the earth. The first is the Last Supper. And the, um, the second is the prayers in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, the Last Supper has incredible symbolism. And we're going to see somewhat how that symbolism is realized in the person of Christ. And at that small group setting, Jesus had some final words for his uh, men who were about to undergo the greatest trial that they had ever faced. And they would see their master violently uh, removed from them and subjected to extreme torture. We also see the intimate meeting of Savior and betrayer in Judas Iscariot who looks into the face of a brother who hates him. Incredible. And then finally we see the intimacy of the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane as Jesus pours out his heart to the Father. And in these intimate moments before the arrest of Jesus Christ, we really see the intimate nature of suffering. And we see the presence of a God who loves us so much that he allows suffering for his redemptive purposes. So let's begin chapter 26 in verse 20. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very, very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. So, Matthew's kind of giving us a little bit of the Reader's Digest version of the betrayal of Jesus Christ and also of uh, the Last Supper. Now, the time where uh, this is beginning is on Thursday evening between sunset and midnight. And it is the Passover feast or, feast, or as the Jews today call it, the Seder feast. As it is full of symbolism. And there are a lot of things that take place here that Matthew just doesn't give us. And we could go into great detail of what those other things were. I'm going to mention of a few of them. But I really want to stick to Matthew's account because Matthew's got a purpose for what he's writing. And he's showing us the betrayal of Jesus Christ and then his arrest. And it's, it is a, a shorter version. But um, the betrayal actually took place, as John records it for us, where uh, Jesus is saying, somebody's going to betray me, and uh, they're all going, is it I, Lord, is it I? And they, the question presupposes a negative answer. So they're saying, it's not me, is it? And then Peter uh, mentions to John, who's sitting next to Jesus, and he's going, Psst, hey, John, what, Pete, what? 
ask Jesus who it is. So nobody else really knows what's going on here. This was just a little thing that happened between Peter and John. And so John leans back and he goes, Hey Jesus, who is it? And Jesus tells him, It's the one to whom I give the piece after I dip it in the sauce. And so he dips it in and he hands it to Judas Iscariot, identifying him as uh, the betrayer. And so then that's where we get what Jesus said to the man. It's, it's he who has dipped his hand in the dish with me. And so that has a, a meaning as well as uh, identifying who the betrayer was. It also has the meaning of the betrayal of a friend. Uh, in that culture, if you ate with someone, you were connected with them. Uh, and, and these were his brothers. And to be uh, betrayed by a brother was just the, the ultimate in, uh, in betrayal. And, and Jesus, though he knows that Judas will betray him, he, he realizes what this really means for Judas. And, and he says, you know, it'd be better if the guy had just never been born. I mean, even in betrayal, Jesus has a measure of compassion for this man. Um, so, they begin the Seder feast. And uh, in verse 26, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Now, uh, as this is taking place, uh, it's actually in the middle of the feast. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the different points here. But what took place was that Judas actually uh, responded to Jesus, or Jesus said, you know, um, is it I, Lord? And, and Jesus said, it's it, as you have said it. And then at that point, uh, John records for us that Satan entered Judas and he went out to do what he was doing. And now Jesus continues on and he says, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink it again, drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom kingdom. And then just going into verse 30 a little bit. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out. So this is the whole of the Seder feast. But as you can see, this is a, uh, just the Reader's Digest version of it. I wanted to talk a little bit about this feast because it's hugely symbolic. And what Jesus does with the Last Supper is He takes the Passover feast, the Seder, and, he's, and He just blows it open so that you can really see what's going on here. Now, the Lord told His people, the Jews, to celebrate the Passover. We talked a little bit about it last week. It was the celebration of their rescue from Egypt. They were enslaved in Egypt and God brought about the ten plagues of Egypt and the very last one was the death of every firstborn. The only way they could protect themselves was to take the blood of a spotless lamb, uh, sacrifice that lamb and apply the blood to the doorposts of their house and then eat the lamb and as the angel of death came over he would see the blood applied to the doorposts and he would um, pass over that house. And so they were told to celebrate this. And they would recline on couches at a table and that was to show their freedom that they had from slavery in Egypt. They could be at their ease. They could relax. And the meal consisted and was focused around four cups of wine. Now those four cups would symbolize the four parts of a uh, a promise that God made to the Jews in Exodus chapter 6. If you're a note taker, Exodus 6, verses 6 and 7. And these are the four parts of that promise. He said, number one, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. The second part of the promise, I will deliver you from slavery to them. The third part, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. And then number four, I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. So I will bring you out, deliver you, redeem you, and take you to be my people. Now keep track of those. Bring you out, deliver you, redeem you, and then take you to be with me. Okay? So... Um, and by the way, if later on you want to look at a much fuller account of the, the Seder, uh, I've got a link uh, in the study notes that we'll post on our website, calvarychapelnewburg.org, and you can uh, do some more uh, focused reading on that. Um, so let's talk about these four cups. The first cup was um, the, the, the blessing for the Passover festival, for the Seder meal. And it was the cup of blessing or a sanctification. It was a special occasion because usually they just...